All right, so you know how in Jeanette Winterson's novel, Gut Symmetry, she talks about Paracelsus and how he talks about there's no such thing as poison, there's just like too much of a thing, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I have some thoughts on that. <laughs> planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Look, folks, I don't know nothing. I'm just a dude on a bicycle talking away about how I'm trying to evolve as a uh, filmmaker, as a poet, and as a human being. I appreciate you being on the ride with me this morning. So yeah, in her uh, novel, Jeanette Winterson wrote a novel called Gut Symmetries, G-U-T Symmetries. And in it, she talks about this dude named Paracelsus. He's a real guy, an old Greek fella. Speaking of the Greeks, good morning, Talia Winery. They're up there working. It's crush season. That means they just brought in all the grapes. We were there yesterday, had some of their new Cabernet. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It, actually, I can smell it out here, the fermenting grapes. They said they were going to get in, what was it, 27 tons of grapes tomorrow? Oh my gosh, they're actually looking for volunteers. You can go help them. I don't know what you do, but you can go help them bring in the grapes, I guess. <laughs> I think that would be a kick. But as Paracelsus said, it's not that anything is poisonous to us, that there's no such thing as poison as such. It's that there just can be too much of a thing that kills a person. Speaking of poison, the idea was that in excess is the problem. So like yesterday, I had a lovely glass of their Syrah and then a glass of their lovely new Cabernet, which is fantastic. Hey, good morning. From Scutney, Vineyards. Is it vineyards? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. So two glasses is great, and then a half a glass with dinner. Very good. Hey, good morning on your left here. Hey. Ran to that dude and his dog over at uh, Push and Pour Coffee this morning. I know, I've been uh, riding to Push and Pour, and so recording the podcast before I get to Push and Pour. So we haven't seen this part of the trail in a while. Anyway, the bottom line is, the wines at Talaya, very solid. Their Cabernets, I think, are really kind of special. It's nice to have a distinctive wine every once in a while, isn't it? I think this new Cabernet that they've got, the Scutney Vineyards Cabernet, I think it's 2015. I think that's what it is. 2015 or 16. Ah, sorry, Earl. I don't remember, man. Highly recommend checking them out because the fact that the wine is great doesn't mean anything. What makes it a great place is that they are such amazing hosts. They are such great people. They always treat us well, so thanks you guys. Thanks Talia, Carrie, Earl, all of you, all the peoples. Appreciate it. But here's the thing. Got home and had half a glass of wine then with dinner. And you see where this is headed, where Mr. Paracelsus was talking. <laughs> and then had another half a glass of wine, or maybe a full glass. Anyway, three, is too many in order to get up and write in the morning. Plus, I haven't been in the habit of getting up and writing in the morning because I've been, you know, drinking too much and I hate admitting that, but it's true. I'm just wasting my life drinking too much. Oh, there's the cats. There's like this family of cats over here that lives in the woods, it looks like. So 
So I had another thing about excess. You know, I carry my camera gear on my back in a backpack. I remember, oh, about a year ago, I guess, I switched from a messenger bag, my Timbuktu that I absolutely love, messenger bag, switched over to a Chrome Industries backpack. I was able to carry a lot more weight. Well, the accumulation of that kind of started adding up over time, you know, 15, 20 pounds a day, every day. Over the summer, I didn't carry as much. And then when it got cooler, I started carrying my camera again and because of fall colors and such. Well, the last couple of weekends, you know, I've been working on the bike trailer. We've been installing gutters. So I've been out working a lot, which is great. I love it. But then at night I'd lay down in bed my back would be in so much pain that I could barely move. And then I couldn't get up. <laughs> like one night I laid down before dinner, thought oh, I'll just rest my back a little. It took Jennifer and I together 15 minutes to get me off of the, the bed. Oh, it was, it's very depressing. Anyway, there's something going on with my spine, my back, lower back. I'm not saying this for sympathy, I'm just letting y'all know. That's one of the reasons we're going much slower today. It's also the reason that we're on the Hukui Ku because we can mount up the panniers and I don't have to have a backpack on, which is super awesome. I do still wonder if the, the motion in the lower back, because there's still a lot of lower back muscles. But let me tell you, you want a good ab workout? Get some back pain. <laughs> That'll tighten your abs right up. <laughs> I'm trying to make light of it. I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Anyway, blah, 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 boo hoo, Jeff. We're not trying to cry about it. Just letting you know what's going on. But I got to thinking about Paracelsus because I haven't had anything to drink, had nothing to drink on Thursday or Friday. Saturday night, had a glass of wine. And then last night had three or a half-ish, which put me over, made me a sleepy head this morning, so I didn't get up and write, but it's felt so good. So I'm really grateful to have that positive reinforcement that changing those habits is a very good thing. Hey, good morning, coming around your left. Hi there. But it reminded me of the Paracelsus quote, which reminded me, of course, of the Jeanette Winterson novel. Jennifer and I were talking about novels. She just finished Ocean Vuong's novel on earth were briefly gorgeous she shared this amazing passage with me maybe we'll talk about that on thursday i haven't read the book so i don't feel like i can really be quoting from it because i feel like that's like just stealing you have to experience a thing to talk about a thing <clears throat> to a certain extent <laughs> the thing i love about jeanette winterson's gut symmetries is it's about three people and they end up on a sailboat together. And they have all, all these conversations about art and humanity and they're, they switch off being lovers. They switch off partners, being partners with one another. And what I love about the novel is that Winterson brings in these ideas of time and oppositional forces. And if you remember back from your astrophysics classes, <laughs> yeah, I know, I didn't have any astrophysics classes either, either, but you had enough physics that, you know how in uh, particle physics they talk about the grand unified theory, the GUT theory, gut symmetries. Yeah, you see where this is headed. So basically the grand unified theory is that the idea that there are strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces that are all converging to a single point of energy, I think is the way that it, that goes. They've ne it's never been observed, but there are several different theories around the phenomenon. A lot of people are starting to think that these three forces, the strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces were all one, 
back in the early days. Oh, sorry, brother. Early days of the universe and uh, that some friction brought them apart from one another, which kind of created our universe or a more mature version of it. But that like the planets and all are fragments of that energy, some sort of a sparks of that energy is sparking off. Yeah, whew, my back is sore. Whoo, baby. I am running my tires a little lower today so that there's a little more bounce. That's a trick. If you uh, feel like your bike ride is really harsh, you can uh, lower the tire pressure five, 10 pounds and that'll smooth that out. You gotta pedal harder though. <laughs> Anyway, Jeanette Winterson weaves this idea of the Grand Unified Theory through the recombination of this, the three characters, a strong character, a weak character, and a very electromagnetic character. I haven't read the novel in a few years, but man, it was so good. The thing that I really appreciate about it is how she runs everything, even the title, gut symmetries. So it's grand unified theory symmetries, how people, the forces that people exhibit within our personalities are symmetrical with the grand unified theory, which we are all from some falling out of light, right? Isn't that awesome? I just love that, that we cannot escape the way that we create, the way that we explain the world, the way that we are. We cannot escape our physical existence, our physical presence. I guess that's also why I was thinking about this, because this back problem and thinking, wow, man, I may not be on a bike for a while. That really bummed me out, because it's kind of, uh, kind of built a lifestyle around that at this point. Anyway. That gets sad and morose over there, and we're not, we're not gonna go there. That's not what this is about. This is about the wonder, and especially in the fall with the changing of seasons, we're definitely feeling the, the physical change. We're warm in the afternoons, cool in the morning, seeing the physical change of the, the leaves and such. Boy, we're all a little blissed out or something this morning, aren't we? You see that? I was totally in, my, in the wrong lane twice. <laughs> ah. All right. So folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle and maybe your bicycle is studying the intricacies of particle physics astrophysics maybe it's writing novels we saw a cool play a fun play thematically over the weekend casserole thank you pride foundation they had some extra tickets that they uh, were giving away to some pride foundation members so thank you very much folks for for that we appreciate it it was a fun play but it didn't have an overriding metaphor through the writing and i really miss that when when i go for an art experience I'm always very interested in it. Uh, see, see, middle-aged dudes just can't ride right out in front of people. You gotta wait for them to wave you on. I know, man. What is all this moaning this morning? Good grief, Jeffrey. I'm sorry, folks, I don't mean to be moaning. <laughs> I really don't. I'm a little concerned about my back and it's bringing some mortality, mortality check? <laughs> mortality check, I like that. It's bringing the mortality check. A little bit this weekend, feeling a little, little old and broken and fairly useless around the house. Didn't get as much gutter work done as I had hoped. We got some fascia up though, that, that was good. But we were beyond all that, weren't we? So, 
Where were we? Yeah, we were riding your bicycle. Hey folks, whatever your bicycle is, I hope that you get a chance to be on it today in whatever way you can. I want you, I hope that you're able to engage with your thing in your way. It's super important. Um, you know, this is the only ride we get and I am very grateful to be on it with you. Thanks for letting me ride with you this morning. And uh, check out Jeanette Winterson's novel, Gut Symmetries. Actually, oranges are not the only fruit. Way better one to check out. Uh, I, it's a little bit more, less physics. There's a lot of physics in Gut Symmetries, but that one, just amazing storytelling. Folks, hope you have a great week. Look forward to riding with you again on Thursday.